Today, we are going to count uh, the number of arguments passed uh, to functions in C. And it's going to happen at compile time because we're going to use the C preprocessor, which is the only way of doing it, I think. The interface that we will want is something like this. A macro called, uh, for instance, an args uh, for number of arguments. And if we pass, if we pass three arguments like so, we want it to evaluate uh, to three. And if we pass two arguments, we wanna we want it to evaluate uh, to two. Now C is by far my favorite language, but 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 it uh, has several major drawbacks. Uh, for instance, it lacks function overloading, operator overloading, variable number of arguments passed to functions and default values for those arguments, and uh, arbitrary compile time computations. Now, the function overloading situation has been kind of solved uh, by the C plus C11 generic keyword. And if you use clang, by the attribute overloadable thing. Lack of operator overloading makes writing any sort of mathematics really uh, unwieldy because an expression like this one, for instance, tr translates into this in functional notation and the infix notation is just much more natural. The variable number of arguments is, I mean, kind of implemented by std arg. Uh, but it's the it's actually the argument's not very good in my my opinion, and uh, it's also kind of unsafe because it stuffs everything into the stack, and unless you're very careful with alignment and uh, promotions and that sort of thing, it's not that hard to, to run into stack overflows, and the default number of arguments, it's a uh, yeah can be implemented with macros. Compile time computations can also be done with macros to some degree. Uh, although I don't know how much. I know that macros are not during complete because in particular they lack uh, they lack arbitrary dev recursion. But I'm not sure sure what else they lack. And as far as uh, the variable number of arguments is concerned, uh, one of the first step, steps towards doing that properly is counting the number of arguments to functions, which is what we are going to do right now. And it happens to begin with a trivial observation. And it is, how, uh, how do we select the kth argument passed to a macro, or to a function for that matter, but in this case a macro. Let's say we want to select argument 2. Then all we do is uh, return argument 2. So if we call this uh, macro and we pass, say, uh, three arguments, and now uh, now we run the C preprocessor, then this expression evaluates to C, which is argument uh, argument two. So A is argument zero, B is argument one, and C is argument two. And uh, likewise, this is how we would select argument one, argument zero, and argument one, respectively. So that uh, the first expression value is to A, and uh, so on. And that is all we need, actually, to, to count the number of arguments past the two functions. First, we need to expand our macro to take an arbitrary number of parameters. And then it'll only, let's actually add another argument. Let's say that, because this macro will end up counting only up to three arguments. So now we pass, we call it like this, and it evaluates to nothing. Oh yeah, because we are passing nothing an argument. Yeah, so if we call it like this right now, it evaluates to, to argument three, which in this case is D, because A is argument zero and so on. What happens if we now pass it uh, the value three at position at, uh, at position three? Then, if we run the C preprocessor, it returns the value three. And then, if we wanted to, uh, what we want is for the macro to return two in the case that we pass uh, call it with two arguments, and we want the macro to return the number the number one if we call it with one argument. So we want a construction that works in all those cases, and that in all cases. And in the first case returns one, and the second case uh, returns two, and then in the last case returns three. And it turns out that the construction that achieves precisely that is this one. Because if we call it like, wait, and it was not that one for some reason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if we 
call uh, if we return argument three using this construction, uh, in the case that we pass one argument at position three, we will have the number one. And if we pass and we call it with two arguments, at position three will have will have the, the number two. And if we call it with three arguments, at position three will have the number three. And that is and that is what we needed. So now we can generalize this in two directions. First, we need uh, we can generalize it to count the argument to count zero arguments as well, and also to count the more arguments. Now, what we want is to automate the act of appending this list at the end. So, what we want is for uh, our n arcs macro to take uh, an arbitrary number of arguments, and this arbitrary number of arguments will be our relevant argument, uh, our relevant arguments in this case. So A or AB or ABC. And uh, whenever you are passing a named argument, you access it within the macro using the name of the argument itself. But when you pass a variadic argument, the way you access it is by using uh, this identifier token thingy. And so what we want is to call uh, the get arcs macro on our uh, list of arguments, say A or B or C, and then append uh, this list of values at the end. And that should accomplish the same thing. Yeah. So that's uh, the first expression. Uh, th th this expression is uh, still value to one, this one to two, and this one to three as desired. But it doesn't work for zero arguments. And uh, it doesn't work because of the, I think it's because of the way, uh, because, uh, wait a minute. I'm not entirely sure, sure what it, why it doesn't work, but I think it's because of something, because of what happens whenever you pass no arguments. So in this case, it's returning one. So it is as if we were passing something here. So this is argument zero, argument one, argument two, and argument three. Right, so I think that, um, either the spec or the secret processor or, or something or someone has said that uh, if you pass, if your argument list is empty, then this uh, this is empty. But if this v arcs is empty, then this co comma here st still counts as a phantom argument or something. And uh, the net result is that this is argument zero, this is argument one, this is argument two, this is argument three, and so we get a, a one here instead of a zero, which is what we wanted. So the way, so what we need to do in order to uh, to get uh, what we want is to de uh, delete this comma in the case that uh, we passed no arguments, and we do that via this construction. Yeah, so if we do this, it basically tells the, the C preprocessor that uh, if the argument list is empty, then we just kill all of this. And in the case that it is empty, then no, we, we, we kill this, right? So this would be argument zero, argument one, argument two, and argument three. I think I've made a mistake in explaining this, but hopefully you get the point. <laughs> Uh, and this is a C GCC extension, but uh, uh, I've tested it. I've tested it on uh, the Tiny C compiler, which I really like because it compiles things super fast, and on Clang, and it works. And uh, uh, another way of, uh, in which this works is using the opt, which I'm not sure if, if it's a C plus plus or C, but in any case, GCC offers it, and uh, it does the same thing. It says, uh, look, if the list of arguments is empty. Then uh, kill kill this com comma. So uh, this comma gets killed, uh, and this gets killed because the list of arguments is empty. And so this is argument zero, argument one, argument two, and argument three, and we get zero uh, for the case uh, that the argument list is empty. And if the argument list is not empty, then this co comma stays, and this becomes a, for instance. So this would be argument zero, argument one, argument two, and argument three, which is one as desired. So that would be it. And now if we want to extend this to more arguments, well, the extension is straightforward. We say argument four, and now this should work for up to three arguments. Yeah, wait, nope. Wait, what? That is not right. I found a huge mistake. Okay. Yeah, 
And uh, that only works up to, uh, up to three arguments, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The number four isn't even there. And that is how you extend it. So, for instance, if you want to count up to 255 arguments, then you do something like this. And now you can count uh, up to that many arguments. And that's it, as far as counting arguments is concerned. So one application of counting arguments is that now uh, we can use std arg in a bit more automated fashion. So for instance, suppose we want to compute the minimum of a list of integers. Or the maximum. So we have an int here. And uh, let's explicitly say that uh, it's an int 32. And just to show an untrivial data structure, let's use the... Let's say that we have a list of uh, integer vectors, integer uh, two-dimensional integer vectors, and we want to compute the maximum of that list over the over, over component zero. So we have a function called max uh, zero that operates on a on an IVAC two on IVAC twos. And uh, the standard says that uh the radic functions must take uh, uh, at least one named argument. And presumably that is because otherwise it, uh, it would have no way of knowing how many arguments you, you, you passed. I'm not sure though. Now let's do something port non-portable here and set uh, this. Now let's assume that the uh, signed integers use two's complement and uh, uh, I think this should be the the minimum value for an i32. Aha, uh -huh, okay, that's it. Yeah, it's a plus one. So now we are, we should, this should be the maximum. So for instance, if we pass 99 here, yeah, uh, I can guarantee that, that this implementation of maximum is correct, but it does seem to be working. So now the now the cool thing is that uh, we can wrap this, for instance, around. Uh, well, first let's use the generic, for instance, as an example. And I don't even remember how generics used. Yeah, so it takes like an argument. Yeah, never mind. Let's not let's not use use generic. I don't even care. No, but now we can wrap our function. Around the uh, macro, we can wrap it around the macro. No, we can wrap a macro around it or something. And uh, and so the first value that we pass to the underlying function is the number of arguments counted automatically. And then we pass the, the arguments uh, themselves. And so now we don't need to pass the count because the count will automatically be computed uh, for us. Okay, that works. I think we may need an extra set of parentheses around here. On these guys, not sure. Yeah. So this is a slightly non-trivial application of this stuff. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, now this is less crappy. Yeah, so now uh, the number of arguments should be counted automatically and the maximum should be computed com uh, should be computed correctly, although I'm not sure, but uh, the point is <laughs> that this construction seems to be working, and that is it.